Welcome back everybody. Chef David here from the New Wave Kitchen. We're gonna do some Thanksgiving uh, dishes today for you and we're gonna try to get you in and out of the kitchen very quickly. And the reason I like to do that is because on Thanksgiving, one of my rare days off, I wanna spend time with my family. I really don't wanna spend it in a hot kitchen. So right now we're gonna do two dishes simultaneously. I'm gonna start a very simple bone-in turkey breast and I'm also going to do a stuffing from scratch. Now, why I'm doing a bone-in turkey breast and not the whole turkey is simple. It's gonna cook faster. And many times with smaller families, like my family's only three of us, we don't need a big 18 pound turkey. So we do the whole breast, but I cook it on the bone because the bone brings a lot more flavor to the breast. Uh, this one here is called Hoka. This is actually a local one right here in Illinois, down in Waterman, uh, a little southwest of here. Uh, they're kind of famous in Illinois, Chicago area for their turkey. Uh, it's all natural. So what I've done is uh, it was fresh, it wasn't frozen. If it's frozen, put it in your refrigerator overnight. Don't defrost it in water, don't defrost it in the oven. Just take it out of the fridge, put it in your sink overnight or put it in your refrigerator overnight. It's the best way to defrost a frozen turkey. But again, mine is fresh. So all I'm doing here is I'm just gonna take mine out of the, the plastic that it comes in. Now you're gonna see what you think is, that goes right in the garbage. You're gonna see what you think is a lot of moisture on here and sometimes it's actually red and you're gonna think it's blood. It's not blood. It's pure water coming out of the, the meat and it's not blood, just so you know. Uh, but what I like to do is I like to take paper towels and because it helps crisp the skin up, I like to make sure I get this nice and dry, especially on the top of the skin, right? This is the part we want really nice and dry. And then also make sure anything that you touch the turkey, your hands, the cutting board, you wash and sanitize before you move on to the next dish. This is why I'm actually using this tray to prep the turkey. This way I don't contaminate the cutting board. So anyway, again, this is a bone in turkey. Here's the neck, here's the breast side. They leave a little of the side meat on, which is fantastic. That can go under it. And I like to have a nice shape. Now this is gonna go into the new wave oven. It's gonna go in at 360 degrees for an hour and a half. After that, I'm gonna raise the temperature to 400 and I'm gonna cook it for another 20 minutes. When I take it out, I'm gonna turn the unit off, let it rest for about 15 minutes. But before I do that, I'm gonna take the internal temperature, should be at 165 Fahrenheit. And that's how you know the turkey's safety and the same goes for your chicken, okay? So now, when you do turkey, I see people put all kinds of crazy stuff on them. I do a few very simple things. Uh, and again, using the plastic tray so we don't make a mess. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt. I'm gonna put some Hungarian paprika and you can use just regular paprika. You can use smoked paprika actually is wonderful. I couldn't find any. Um, and I'm gonna use something uh, pretty cool. I don't know if you've ever seen juniper berries, uh, but these come from a, a bush, kind of like an evergreen bush. Um, they're actually used to flavor gin, which is actually pretty cool. And actually these berries are really soft. You can actually just mash them up in your hand or we can run a knife over them and I may do that, okay? Uh, and I'm just gonna make a quick little rub over the turkey. All right, so basically what I'm gonna do, simple as pie, I'm gonna sprinkle a really healthy amount of paprika because I wanna get enough on here because I'm gonna pick this up and massage it on both sides. I'm also gonna start with a little bit of sea salt. Not that much, but a little bit. And we're gonna get it into the skin. And I'm gonna turn it over and the same thing. And I tried to use the exact amount of paprika that I'm gonna need for the dish because now I'm dipping my hands in here and this one's gonna be contaminated now, so we won't be able to use that. And if you have to clean up your station, like obviously chef's gonna have to do, then that's not an issue. Now, there's two other things you can do here. We can add more salt, and what the salt do, it brings the moisture to the skin and will help crisp it a little bit in this stage because we're going on high heat. But you can also wait on the most amount of the salt till later when we do the last 20 minute cooking and that'll really get the skin crispy. So I think that's what we're gonna do, okay? So I'm gonna put this aside. When we come back, I'm gonna clean my hands up. I'm gonna show you how quickly to cut the juniper berries and then we're gonna get this in the oven. Welcome back everybody, Chef David, New Wave Kitchen. We're finishing up our turkey dinner. We're gonna do two recipes tonight. We talked about it earlier. Uh, I put the turkey on the side just for a moment because what I want to show you again about these juniper berries, these things are absolutely wonderful. I like to spill them all over the place, obviously. Uh, but if you've ever had gin, gin and tonic, that flavor, that real f uh, floral herbal flavor in gin, 
actually comes from juniper berries. And if you can even bite one, it tastes like gin. Uh, but what I like to do is crush them up a little bit. And there's two ways you can do that. You can just put them down and you can actually just put a bowl on them like this. And you can see how fast they will smash up, right? Or you can put them together and just run a knife over them because they're very, very soft. You just gotta go slow, take your time. We don't wanna lose a finger on Thanksgiving, right? That could be the finger I use for my remote control watching football, so we don't wanna do that. All right, so just enough really to just impart this real floral herbal flavor. And it's actually quite common in, in cooking and in uh, some really good restaurants. Juniper is usually associated with game, with duck, quail, venison. Uh, and I'm using it with my turkey because I know I have a really good quality turkey, all right? And then very simply, this turkey is going right into my new wave oven, okay? Get this out of the way. And basically, what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of a, a schmear on here, all right? Not much. I just want it a little bit on here for flavor. And you're really going to see you don't need a lot of the juniper berries. A lot of this is going to come right back to us for the flavor. Now watch how simple. New wave oven, you guys know them, you love them. Right in the oven. Now this is a six and a half pound turkey breast. So this is actually gonna work out really well for us. So, hour 30 at 360 degrees. Sounds maybe low to you, but it's not, trust me. Okay, and we are going to set this. Cook time, so let's do 130 and then cook temp, it's already at 360, I'm gonna start it. When we come back for the turkey, we are going to clean up, we're gonna sanitize everything, and this will be roasting long, and we're gonna start a very simple, very fast, homemade Thanksgiving Day stuffing. Welcome back everybody, Chef David here in the kitchen, and we are gonna start finishing up our Thanksgiving Day uh, recipes for you, and we're gonna do a series of these so you'll see them. We've just done an apple crostata we're gonna have on social media, and we just did a wonderful cranberry sauce that should already be up there. Uh, and right now we have our turkey in. We already talked about that. Now I'm gonna do a very simple stuffing. I don't like to make it complicated. I like to make it simple, I like to make it savory, and I like to make it quick. Okay, so mine is very simple. Now, uh, sometimes I do mine a little more complex with sausage and oysters and stuff. I know it sounds crazy. This one is real easy, this is real good for the kids. It's gonna have a couple simple ingredients. Green apples, because they're in season right now. A little bit of onion, a little bit of shallot. We've talked about these before. These are, these are in the onion family, in the allium family, uh, and they're very sweet, very common in, uh, in French cuisine. Uh, I've got fresh sage. I know a lot of people at Thanksgiving use rubbed sage or dried sage. Find the fresh, it's worth it. Fresh rosemary, a little bit of stock, and some celery and of course some good quality bread. Now there's some debate over the bread. People wanna know what kind of bread do I use? It's stuffing. You can use any bread you want. I don't care if it's challah bread or brioche. Uh, it could be Italian bread, it could be just plain white bread, Texas toast. I'm just happy to be using an Italian style ciabatta bread. I like the yeasty flavor of it. It's almost, it's a sourdough, so I like that, that kind of bite to it. We're gonna get our aromatics going in our PIC, in our forge cookware pan. And once I get those sweated down and everything's coming out, very simply, gonna mix them with the diced bread a little stock to moisten it. We're gonna put it in our bakeware, and this is silicone. This is exclusive to New Wave and our New Wave oven. Uh, silicone, it's easy to clean, nothing sticks to it, and it goes into a 500 degree oven, which is fantastic. So we're gonna pack my stuffing in here, bake it, then we'll scoop it out and put it in a beautiful platter for the table. All right, so we get started. I'm gonna turn this on right now on medium hot. We're gonna get that going, and now, two things on the apples. One, if I want, I could easily peel them or you can leave the skin on. I actually like leaving the skin on. I like the color, and there's actually some real good flavor in the skin, and of course, let's not even start about the vitamins, but real simple. We want a small dice with everything. Good sharp knife, come right down the sides, and then, so we got a flat, now we're just gonna get these sides. Gonna go right to the core. Now please don't waste the core. If you have chickens at home, they go berserk over these, or at least get it into your compost bin tonight, okay? So look, real simple, guys. Quick, quick dice. Cut our little planks. Does not have to be restaurant perfectly neat like I would normally do working in a restaurant. It just has to be relatively uniform so that I can uh, make sure that they cook evenly. 
Okay? Very simple. We don't have to be super uh, complex about this one, guys. This is actually very simple. So again, just want these basically uniform. We don't have to make them perfect. In a restaurant, a little different story. Uh, stuff has to look a little different when people are paying for it. This is for my family. And these guys are getting it for free, so. So, depending on how much stuffing you do, one apple usually gives you about a good cup of diced apple. Uh, so we can do a little more. We can get right into the onion. And again, onion flavor is gonna be pretty bold, right? So. You have to decide on your recipe. The recipe that I give is for a half onion. My brother, when he makes it, uses a whole onion. He likes the flavor. I think it's overpowering. So for this recipe, which we'll give you later on, half an onion is more than enough. And it's just a good medium Spanish onion. Compost. Give it a good peel, and we're just going to give this a real quick, very simple dice so that we can... That goes in the compost, guys. And again, doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be uniform, okay? And while I'm chopping my herbs, I'm gonna start getting these into the pot. All right, now this recipe, we're gonna get a little smoked. I use a lot of butter in my stuffing. This is good grass-fed butter, that's why it's so yellow. And I'm just going to start transferring this stuff in and let it start sweating out and give me some of the flavor. And you'll see in your house, when you do this, a big change when you start adding the herbs, okay? So, you can see this butter, how yellow it is. This is the gra sometimes called Irish butter you see in the supermarket. This is just a good local grass-fed butter. And when the cows eat the grass, the milk is a little different color. The butter comes out this amazing yellow color actually tastes better, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go in a little shallot on this. And again, we cut it kind of the same way we cut the onion. They're not difficult to peel, they're just way smaller. So we have to take a second to get the skin off. Sometimes you get the secondary skin on there that's attached to a really good piece, but it's gotta come off. All right, so that being said, and these I'm gonna slice thinly because I want a little texture with these. You could finely dice them if you want. I think it makes a little better texture. Should we slice them? And in go to shallots. Now at this point, I'm actually going to add some ground pepper. And you can see on the PIC, I've only got it at 375, right? And that's because I want this to cook not so crazy. That's why it's not on sear. So black pepper goes in. And I'm not going to season it with salt just yet, okay? Salt brings out too much moisture from vegetables. I don't want them to steam. I want them to sweat a little bit, okay? You've seen me cook vegetables before. I usually do them on high heat. I'm trying to get a little caramelization, some color, but I'm not doing that with this dish, right? I don't need the color because you're not going to see it. And the flavor I'm looking for here is a little more gentle than I'm looking for when I caramelize the vegetables, all right? So now... Let's talk about herbs. This is beautiful, fresh sage. If you can find this, and I'm pretty sure you can, get this, you can see it's almost a little fur, it's like velvet, it's weird, but it smells amazing. Now you could use the dried sage, you can use rub sage, it's very popular around Thanksgiving time, but if you can find the fresh, why wouldn't you? All you do is snap off the leaves. Once again, chickens go nuts for this stuff, or at least get it in your compost. You guys, by now, watching these videos, you should all be growing something at home, I hope. When I was a kid uh, growing up in the uh, inner city just outside of New York, my dad used to have coffee cans in the alley with mint and basil, all kinds of herbs growing in because in the city we didn't have a yard. So we were able to grow it. You guys should be able to. Look, this is a rough chop. I don't need these herbs so finely chopped that... Uh, you don't recognize them anymore, okay? I want a little texture in them. As you can see, I have that, but we also don't want big chunks. See, I don't want to have stuff like this in there. That's the kind of stuff sticks in your teeth, ends up in a Thanksgiving photo. That's not what we want. 
So that's the sage. And if you were here, you would smell this the minute it hits the hot butter. It's just going to give you this amazing flavor. Okay, now for the big one. The big one is rosemary. Okay, so this evergreen family, to me, always smells like Christmas. Very easy to peel. Has a long stem. Slide your finger down, comes right off, okay? And again, this is gonna be a rough chop. You can save a couple of these sprigs like this. They make an amazing garnish on the turkey, yeah? So let's just get some of this in there. Now, just so you know about rosemary, rosemary's been used in holistic medicine for a thousand years. We're gonna use it in a good Thanksgiving stuffing. But, comes with a caveat. Caveat is this. Rosemary's very, very strong herb could easily overpower this whole dish. And again, a quick run through with your knife, all right? We don't need fancy chef chopping here. We just need good country home cooking chopping, okay? But rosemary is also known for its oil. And oils in an herb are gonna give you a lot of bang for the buck. This is gonna be very powerful. So I'm using about a tablespoon there. That's more than enough. <laughs> the other thing I want you to see is, before, I told you I used a lot of butter, and you saw it in there, but where's all the butter gone? The butter's been absorbed, actually, by the onions. Had I added salt to this, the salt would have pulled out so much moisture from the vegetables, it would not have absorbed the fat from the butter. And this is exactly what I want, because each little vegetable here is gonna be a little flavor bomb of onion and apple and rosemary, and of course, butter. All right, so we let this go, and then the next step is very simple. This is not a complicated recipe, right? I'm probably not gonna win any awards doing this one, but I know I'm gonna make some people happy. So this is my sour. I like the flavor of sour. It almost smells like beer, right? You can use any bread you'd like. I stay away from flavored breads. I don't use cinnamon bread or things with rosemary, tomato, focaccia, because I don't wanna add those flavors to my stuffing. I don't wanna mask all this hard work, right? So, two schools of thought on stuffing. How big to cut the bread? Well, it already came sliced, and that's about a half inch, so I'm gonna actually kind of stick with that. And what'll happen is very simple. When you cut the cubes of bread a little smaller, you actually will have a more dense uh, end result in your stuffing. You cut it thicker, it's gonna be fluffier, okay? But I like mine a little more dense. I get to cheat on my perpetual diet on Thanksgiving, I want it to stick to my ribs, guys. And again, this does not have to be fancy, it just has to be uniform. So let's take this out of the bowl. So what I do is, now some people fry their bread, try to toast it in butter and blah, blah. No point to that, okay? This is a baked dish, this is what it is at the end of the day. Okay, so what I'm doing is, I started off in a bowl, and all these aromatics, I might even add some more butter to that because that's kind of my thing. I like butter. And just so you know, for the recipe, this is going to be about 14 ounces of bread. And that's a 9 by 9 pan. And this will all be in the recipe, so hopefully you're drinking a glass of wine and not writing this down. Okay. Goes in. And this is the reason why I did that turkey earlier on that pan. So my cutting board is not you know, contaminated with the raw turkey. And I can go ahead and cut this stuff. So this is my aromatic, okay? It's starting to get real fragrant. This is the base for my stuffing. And I have chicken stock. Now you could use chicken stock, you could use vegetable stock. Uh, I know a lot of people that actually use uh, stock made from chickpeas. If you've ever made your own chickpeas or hummus, uh, which we can do for you one day on the show, it's very easy to make so you don't have to buy the ones in the can. But chickpeas, when you cook them, make an amazing vegetable stock. So vegetable stock or chicken stock, if you make your own, amazing. If you buy it, low sodium, try to get one that's made from natural ingredients, okay? And that's that simple. So I'm gonna add a little more butter to this just because we'll call this a cheat day on the old diet scale, right? Let's get that in. Also, we have bread. Bread is dry, it's already been baked. Bread's gonna absorb the fat. If we don't have enough fat and enough moisture, your stuffing will be bone dry. We don't want that, okay? So, now it doesn't get any easier after this. Time. We let that butter melt. This goes here. And this is my pan. Now you can spray this with a little cooking spray. You can rub it with a little piece of butter if you want it. Uh, a little olive oil, it doesn't matter. 
uh, you can leave it plain because it's silicone, nothing is going to stick. So with the silicone, if you're gonna rub it with butter, that's really just for flavor, okay? And here's a trick that I learned a long time ago from a, a buddy when I worked at a big hotel in New York City. Uh, we would butter the hotel pans, the big metal hotel pans, and we made, you know, a couple of hundred pounds of stuffing for Thanksgiving at the hotel. And uh, I'll show you his little trick. His little trick was to take some salt, and he actually seasoned the butter in the bottom of the pan. Okay, so here we go. See, this is the aromatics. This is what makes stuffing, stuffing. And of course, if you have our forged cookware, a little pitch there, you know that nothing's stuck, easy to clean. So, get this around, let the butter and the bread start having a conversation, talking to each other a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see this, but we already have something that looks very country style. It already looks warm and inviting, right? That's my E1 error message on here, if you guys can see that. Whenever you remove the pan from the PIC, after about 30 seconds, it turns off. Let you know that you're not uh, having contact with metal on here, and it turns off and it's very safe. And even if you put it back on, it doesn't go back on. It's a safety measure that we built in here, so we can just clear that we're done with that for the moment. So again, bread, sourdough, starting to warm up with the hot aromatics I put in there. We have shallots, we have onion, we have green apple, we have fresh sage, fresh rosemary, cracked black pepper. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of salt, and then we're gonna add some stock, okay? And again, I use sea salt, I like the flavor. It does taste a little different than table salt. You got any jumpers, get them back in there. This could not be easier at this point. So now, chicken stock, a little at a time. And I'll tell you why, depends on the bread. Many people I know use uh, day-old bread or stale bread to make their stuffing. And the reason they do that is because it's stale, it absorbs more of the stock, so it doesn't go dry. But what they're not realizing is you start off with something very dry and you're trying to make it moist. Why don't you start off with something fresh that's already still retains a little moisture and you're gonna have better success with your stuffing, I guarantee it. And the other thing I really dislike is when there's too much liquid in the stuffing after you bake it, it's, it's like mashed potatoes. And I still want a little texture. I want it dense, fragrant, but with some texture. So just a little splash more. My mom used to put an egg in her stuffing. I don't like that. I never liked the way that came out. Very simple, guys. Right into my silicone. Get all the aromatics, don't leave anything behind, okay? That's important. So look, this goes in, just press it down. And this is gonna go into the new wave oven, all right? Now, two other things we can do. A little more black pepper on the top, okay? A little more butter. I think you guys see them on a little butter theme here, huh? Break it with your hands if you want to. This is just, again, for flavor, a little moisture, okay? And then I'm going to do one more thing that I like to do. Take another green apple. And I'm going to take a little bit of a julienne, thin slices like this. Let them fly around the kitchen. It's okay. It's Thanksgiving. We're having fun, okay? And these are going to actually will caramelize on the top. And now maybe it looks a little weird having raw apple on top of the stuffing, but what you're gonna see is these are gonna caramelize, it's gonna be amazing uh, sweetness into the savory of the stuffing, so it's a really nice contrast. If you want, you could put a few little sprigs of rosemary on top. That just gives it a real country look, a little more flavor. But when you take this out of the oven, this is gonna look like you just cooked this up in a farmhouse. Okay, so now we're gonna put the stuffing into the new wave oven. We'll take that off. Now this goes right in. This is our baking pan. Actually, we bake cakes, brownies, all kinds of stuff. I do the lasagna in here, it comes out really good. You can order those online somewhere. Okay, so this is going in 45 minutes at the preset of 360. Cook time, 45, cook temp, 
we're going to set this down to 360. 360, Dave. We're going to hit start. We're going to test it with a cake tester to make sure it's hot through the middle. If it's hot through the middle, I'm going to let it cool off inside with the motor off, and then we're going to serve it up. Welcome back, everybody. Chef David here at the New Wave Kitchen, and let's finish up two more of our Thanksgiving Day recipes. We did our beautiful savory stuffing in our New Wave Elite, and this New Wave Elite, we are doing a beautiful bone-in hoka turkey. A hoka turkey is local uh, right here by us out in Waterman, Illinois, and I'm going to show you how to do both. Okay, so we're going to turn this off. Hit pause. Now, the other thing I like about the New Wave Oven for Thanksgiving, if I turn it off and I'm not ready for the turkey, I just leave it in here. It keeps it warm, okay? There's even a warming program on here. We're going to do it this way. And over here, let's reveal this. Once again, my stuffing, if I want, I could easily leave it in here to warm. So if you guys remember the apples and everything is just kind of melted in there, this is going to be a beautiful dish, guys. All right, so let's do this. I want to uh, put this on a platter. It's going to be hot, obviously. All right. So what you see here, that came out of the new wave oven, guys. Tell me that's not amazing, All right? Put this on there. So what I want to do real quick is I'm going to slice a few slices for all of us. That's hot. I just want to see how this came out. And I can show off my new knife I just bought. That's the new wave oven, guys. This is why, believe it or not, that's why I came to work for this company. Because of the stuff that they build. It excites me. So this is how we serve the turkey in my house. We'll make it picture perfect for my camera guys here because they're going to be eating this for lunch, I think, huh, guys? Simple. Just a little garnish, fresh parsley right in the back, and here's turkey, right? Now, I already did some green beans steamed with a touch of garlic and some bell peppers, sea salt and black pepper. That's another side dish. We'll have a recipe for you that next time. And then here's the best one. Unless you love turkey, then that's the best one. But I like... Stuffing, our silicone pan, and you're gonna see something very amazing right now. This is our bakeware. Look at that, I don't know if you can see that, guys, but nothing stuck to it. So I could actually serve it right in here, but I like to dress it up a little bit. If you don't wanna, if you're not worried about the caramelized part, you can actually even just serve these with your turkey and put them in like this. But I want you to see down here, nothing stuck to it. I have so many of these at home because, well, I work here so I can get them, but you guys can order the bakeware uh, right through one of our websites. And this served as a side here, and then if you want to garnish your turkey platter with some of this amazing stuffing, I can smell the sage, I can smell the rosemary, it's just amazing guys, it really is. And this is our stuffing, simple, right, remember I said? We want it to go fast. I don't want to spend the whole day on Thanksgiving in the kitchen. That's a beautiful turkey, okay? That took under two hours. That's our stuffing. That took 45 minutes, and I'll get you the recipe for the green beans. Took 20 minutes, okay? That's more than half my dinner ready for my family. Got to finish my cranberry sauce, my gravy, and some mashed potatoes, and we're done. We're going to be watching football. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Please follow us on social media. Follow us on Instagram and look for these recipes. And please send us pictures of your Thanksgiving day. We'd love to see your food. We'd love to see your family. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone.